So let's get started. Let's make some GUIs in MATLAB. Graphical user interfaces is what that stands for. So to do GUIs, we actually use a GUI. So this basically just makes it a lot easier to organize things visually and to do it faster rather than having to type it all out. Makes it a lot simpler in a lot of ways. So let's first actually pull this up. Often you'll work in the editor when you're doing programming, but the way we can make GUIs with MATLAB is if we click new and instead of a script or live script function, anything like that, we go down to app and we can click blank app. There are a couple of general layouts that if you wanted to follow exactly this, you could go with, but let's click this. So we can see we, we have this new interface that we're working with. Instead of just an editor, we have this app designer. And so the way this is going to work is we basically have two modes of working with this. As you can see here, there's the design view and the code view, and we'll alternate between the two. But basically, let's start with design view. And we have a few things here. On the left, you can see the component library. And it just has a list of components, which are the pieces that we'll actually put into our app. So I could like have a checkbox in there. I could have an edit field uh, for a number. I could have an edit field for a text, a hyperlink, some text, a slider, all those sorts of things. And then on the side here, we have the component browser. This has everything that's currently in our app. So all the components that we placed, if I try and drag one in here, it'll add that component into my component browser because now this is a part of my app because these are just pieces that I can drag in. And once I drag it in, it's actually become something. You can also drag this, change the size of your app. But yeah, as I said, here's the component browser it just shows you what's currently a part of it. Uh, the UI figure is this whole thing. So it's the actual window that pops up when you create your GUI. And then these are the things inside it. As you can see, when I click on one of these, it changes what's down here. And this is the details. Basically, it describes the specific item that we're looking at, the component, and then callbacks for it. And we'll go into callbacks in a second. But basically, with the first sort of tab here, It'll give you just the details of this specifically. So like if I wanted to change what this text actually says, so this should say John is ready. If I close out of that, it will update that text. You can also double click and edit the text there, double click edit the text there, double click edit the number there, all that sort of stuff. But uh, that's what this is for. And if we click off of it, then we've got just the app information. You can specify like which version number, keep track of that, give a description, a summary, tell who the author is. You can also click on the figure itself, talk about the color of it. So if I wanted to change the background, I could do that. I can change the position, everything like that. And now a little bit more here with these components we can do a couple of things one we can group them so like if i select multiple i can click group now when i drag these around they're together so that's all grouping does and next thing i can do is callbacks and one of the ways you can make callbacks is right click callback and then add whatever's here callback and sometimes you'll have multiple options but a callback is just something that when the user is interacting when i actually run this app which i can just click run up here and save this as my app and then whatever name you want let it run and so now this is the actual app so here, I'm just building what it's going to look like. Here, it's running. And I can type a new number in here, and it's changed what's in that 
and it failed not for all time, but just while I'm running this app, it'll keep a 20 in there because it knows now that I've updated it, it should be 20. So if I close this out, um, a callback is something that when I actually have the app running and I interact with it, with this specific thing, then it makes something happen. It runs some code. So if I wanted a callback, for example, with this, I can go down to callbacks and it says value changed function callback. And what this will do if I make it is it'll specify what's going to happen when this is changed. So then when I run it and I have that callback in there, if I change this to 100, it will run the callback and do whatever I specified for it to do. So that's callbacks. There's context menus and you can add a new context menu. This is just when you right click it, when you're interacting with it in the actual app that you're running, what happens. And you can control lots of things like if I click this, I can see what the value is, I can see the limits, so I could specify this should only go between 0 and 100 or whatever. Um, you can specify how it will display it. You can pick the type of text and you can specify if it's visible, for example. So maybe you want to turn this visible and invisible depending on some button being pressed or something. You can control that and then you can specify at the beginning, have it be invisible, whatever, something like that. You disable it entirely. And then you got your context menu, tool tip, all that. And then another really important one is if I right click and I click help on selection, we'll pull up documentation and that will help me figure out what exactly each of these things does. So numeric fields are UI components that allow users to type numerical values in the app. Properties control appearance and behavior. Use dot notation to refer to a particular object and property. So for example, with numerical edit field, we can refer to dot value and specify it that way. We'll go more into that in a second. But now let's hop into code view. And as you can see, it's all grayed out right now. So if I actually tried to type into this, it won't let me. So any, anywhere it's grayed out with this, I can't change it. And the reason for this is because it's a non-destructive workflow. So in going back between the design view and code view, if I could just edit this out, this is important for the function of my app and the design view may not know how to react to that. So the only things that will pop up as editable in this code view are the things that aren't specified in this design view. So like if I make a callback, then in the code view, I'll specify what it does. So let's look at that. If I actually make this callback, then it'll pop over to code view and it will pop up a white section. And you can see in this app layout, it selected my edit field and it just put in value equals app.editField.value. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But in this code view structure, we've got our code browser over here. That's got our callbacks. So we've got our one callback here, edit field value changed that I just made when I made the callback for this. For functions, I've got my AP1. That's right here. And if we added more functions, it'd show that. Then we got properties. And right now we don't have properties, so it'll just specify that. We can add a property from here. You can add a function from here, add callbacks from here. Though I don't find this is the best way to add callbacks. Then we got our app layout. So I can actually interact with this. It'll show, again, I've got my component browser over here. And I'll just show what's selected. And the same thing here as was in design view. So again, up here now, I can add a callback function property, add input arguments, app help text all that sort of stuff. And these three are the main things that, that matter here. So properties are the first thing we'll talk about. Properties are just values. There's two options, private property, public property, and the only difference is private, store data to be shared with 
the app only. Public can be shared inside and out of the app. So, oops. So if you need to access this stored data outside of the app, then you make it a public property. Otherwise, keep it private property. Then you got private function, public function, and private versus public does the same thing. But this isn't a value. It's a function defined in this app. So we can create them this way. We also have got callbacks. So you can create a callback this way with specifying the component and then the callback related to that. So you have a bunch of different options. And then you can specify the name or you can go with the default and click add callback. But the way I prefer to do it, right clicking in here and adding the callback. So there we go. That's design view versus code view. And let's just go into something very basic, how I would with this callback. So this callback is saying whenever a user, when they're interacting with this interface, clicks in here, changes this value, it will run this. So what it does is it says function edit field value changed. So that's just what it's called. And it's run every time that changes. Then it's got an input app and a second input event. So this is a method within my class, my app. And when I go in here, this is uh, just coded automatically put in. I could delete this if I wanted. But this white part is where I can actually have code. And so right here, it just says value equals app dot edit build dot value. And so that's using my input right here app. And that's just defining this app here. And so when I say value equals app dot, I'm looking at this app. And I'm saying in the app, I have my edit field. And as you can see, right here in the component browser, it shows edit field in my app here. So then I've got dot value. And that will be inside my edit field value is the thing that's currently stored in it. So if I looked at the design view, this has some number in it. Dot value is whatever that number is. And I can look at more stuff in the edit field. If we go back to just the period, then we can see what the other ones are. Delete obviously is to remove it. I can get the value. Again, that's the same thing. Limits, that's just this, right? Just to specify those. Then I've got lots of other things. I've got visible. This is if you want it to have controlled visibility. Now, let's say I've got a build and I just wanna see what I can do with it. So I'm gonna say every time they change it, I wanna make it whatever they changed it to times two. So I'll pull this back up. So the value is whatever the current value is, and then I'll do it times two. So just basically mess with whoever is uh, using my app. And every time they type something in, screws it up a little bit, makes it multiply by two. So to actually do this then, what I would actually have to do is app.edit.build.value equals app.editfill.value times two. So make what the value is be what the value is now times two. And if I try and run this, let's see what it does. Change it, I'll press 10, enter. It'll immediately switch to 20, 44, enter, switch to 88. And it won't switch any more by me just like clicking in and out because this function is only called up because it's a callback when this is changed. So if I enter 88, it won't do anything. But if I switched it to 89, enter, it will change. So that's just a basic little use of this edit field and a callback. Now let's go into an example of a full app. So I want an app and it should do a few basic things. One, it's got a button, and this button will change what's in this text field. So just change this text 
And for the button, I'll say change text. Click out of it. It'll update that. And this doesn't uh, change anything about what happens with this. This is just what the user sees when they're running our program to get the GUI. So I just double click and specify what that looks like. And next thing I want is two buttons that change a numerical field. So meaning I've got a button here, a button here, and a numeric field here. So I'll group and shift add to group. Then I could swap this over here. Maybe make it like that instead. And you can see I can still move stuff around. When I make it a group, then when I first click it and drag it around, it will drag them all together. But when I click the one specifically inside it, I can drag that one around. And as you may have noticed with the orange lines that are popping up, those are basically controlling the positioning of this. And for example, right now, what it'll do is it'll center this group. So, oops, because I placed it, it takes a little while to get used to what this is actually doing. But the dotted lines there are saying it's centered and the line to the left of text and edit field and at the bottom there, that's just saying arrange it together with text. And I could get it centered with button two, my change text, for example, like that. I could get it arranged in line with button two, like that. So these are just guides to help you arrange it properly. Sometimes they're a real pain, but uh, that's how it works. And you can actually click grid and snap to grid. And then this will just snap to a grid in the background. So sometimes that's a useful way to do it. And yeah, there's tons of stuff here. You can uh, bring this to the front. So now that will be on top of that button. If they're overlapping, you can bring this one to the back. So now if I move this above, this one will be on top, all that sort of stuff. So kind of interesting and you can just kind of mess around with that see how that works get a little familiar with it now back to what i was actually doing here oops i wanted that button so i'll move this so this changes the text this button will change this field to move up one value so if this is zero it'll move it up to one and yeah just whenever i press it it'll change this to one plus whatever it currently is. And this will be this value, minus one. So it'll just move it up and down. And then finally, I want to include a drop down. Here's my drop down here, drop down. And this drop down will control a figure. So you create a figure with a little axis here. And it looks like a plot in. MATLAB, right? It pulls up title, X label, Y label, all that. And you can directly edit these right now. You can edit them in here. You can edit them later with code, uh, but typically you just change it immediately. If you know theta, I'll say function of theta and plot of trigonometric function. And what I'm actually going to do here is pick plot and it'll have a couple of options here and they will be sine, cosine, and tangent. So if you click on this, double click and then double click here, I can specify sine, cosine, and tangent. And I can minus on that one to get rid of it. I can add some, track some, oops. 
There you go. You can also edit them here. Choose what the default value is and choose the items. So what I'm going to want to do is let the user click sine, cosine, or tangent, and it'll plot it over here. So when I run this, it doesn't do anything yet. I haven't specified how to control everything. Like I can click down on this list, but it doesn't do anything as a result of me clicking one because I haven't told it what to do. And I can click the buttons and everything. Just as a review, what I want to get out of this, click this, put some text in here, push this, uh, increase this value by one, push this, decrease this value by one, and then click a new one here and it plots here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. The first thing I want to do is put some text in here when I push this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a callback for button pushed. And that just creates one here. Function, change text button pushed. And I wanted to put some text in this. So this is app.textedit filled. So I'll go back to my code, or I could have clicked it over here, right? So I'll go app.textedit field dot and value. And I'll make this equal. Let's say I want it to just say button pushed. Let's see if this works. First of all, click that, click change text, and it did work. So I can say some other text in here. And when I push this, it'll change the text to button pushed. So that's how I could control with the button some text being displayed. Now let's do this one. So edit field. Say I have 100 in here. I want to be able to push these and it makes it 101, 102, 103, 102, 101, 100, 99, all that. So how I'm going to do this is create a callback for this button callback, button pushed function callback. And I want to control this thing. And you can change the names of these so that it uh, makes more sense. But I'll just stick with this for now because this is the default if you don't change it. And I'll make the value of that to be the current value plus one. So this button is on top. So it just adds one to this. And then if I add a callback for this one, I can just copy this. And this will subtract one from it. Right, so that you can see if it'll work. If I click run, change text works, button, that's working as well. So if I change this to 50, then I can change it like that. And of course, I probably want to change this text to be something like up one, down one. And let's actually change it so that this one subtracts two, just for the heck of it. Could just do that here run now up one down two so there we go now that one's working and this still isn't working because i haven't told it what to do so let's go back here sign callback and there's two options now for this one unlike the buttons there's two so this has a value changed function callback and drop down opening function callback so if we try just value change function callback, and I want to plot sine, cosine, or tangent here. So let's first say x is 0, 0 0.1, 2 pi. And then y, we don't know yet, because it depends on if this is sine, cosine, or tangent. So what I'm going to actually do here is if app dot, and I'll get the selected value here so app dot pick plot drop down dot and value if this equals and let's look at sign first and this just needs to match whatever's in your items so it needs to be spelt exactly the same way and all that 
sine, then y is sine of x. Else if tab dot pick dot uh, drop down tab to autofill that dot value is cosine, then y is cosine of x. And especially in apps, you want to be careful to suppress everything. So suppress all these. And then another else if app dot pick dot drop down dot value is tan. And in this case, y is tan of x. And then else, I'll just do one here that basically says error unknown drop down. And this is basically just if. When I change this, if I added another, say a cosine. Now I've got three drop downs and it wouldn't do anything when I click a cosine. So maybe I want it to pop an error because I have an unexpected thing happening there. So now I end it and to actually plot this on this figure, we actually have to do something a little bit different and I'll do a plot, but we'll feed in the figure first. So app.ui axes is what this is called. I could click on it and see, yep, that's what that's called. Because the app.ui figure is the actual, it's a little bit confusing, but that's what this is, the, the background thing that has everything in it. So the figure is what's got this button in it. As you can see, when I pull this up, all of these are inside UI figure. So this isn't the figure, that's the UI axes. So to do the plot, I do app.ui axes, and then I give an X and a Y. And I've got a link here with some more information on plotting and figures in app designer and let's see if this would work and suppress this save run of course i've got that working that working and uh, it doesn't show anything right now when i first pull this up so the reason for this is probably that when i created my callback it's right here callback it has a pick plot drop down value changed. So until I actually change it, it's not going to do anything. So let's try and changing it. And there we go. We get a cosine plot. And if I do tan, do tan, sine, it'll be a sine. And if I do a cosine, it will create an error. And I'll say arrays have incompatible size for this operation. That's actually I try this instead, what will happen? Say that, run that. Now it won't pop up an error for this, but it will pop up an error that I specified of unknown dropdown. And that was because when I compared the value, it was a cosine, a cos, which when I checked if it's the single quote sign, this is a matrix of characters, right? So if I go back to MATLAB and here you can see right now what's happening, um, it will pop up whatever errors we got in our command window. But if I try and say test equals test two, it'll give an error because it's incompatible sizes. And that's just saying, this is a matrix that isn't the same size as this. And so you can't actually compare these two matrices. Whereas a string, it's just a matrix of size one, one by one, and one by one. And it checks if this string is equal to this string. So that's an important thing to realize. But nonetheless, it popped up this error because we have an unknown in our dropdown. And so then I could figure out, okay, I got an error. Oh, maybe I don't want this one in here. So I'll take it out. And now I won't get any errors when I actually run this. 
and close this out, run it again. And there's my cosine, tangent, sine, all those. So now I've created a little GUI and it works pretty well. And a, another one you may want to use is a startup function. And that's just a callback that at the start of this, it'll run this function. So maybe you want to do this in the startup as well as in the dropdown change. So now, once you pull it up, it'll automatically do sign. So, kind of nice. Now, there are other ways you can run this because often you don't want to create a GUI just for yourself. Sometimes that's helpful, but often you want to share it with others. So to do that, you can click share and you have a couple options here. You can do a MATLAB app. So this creates an app installation file to share your app with MATLAB users. So this importantly is only for people who have MATLAB. So if you tried to share it as a MATLAB app with somebody who doesn't have MATLAB, they can't do it. Web app, create a deployed web app using MATLAB compiler. So this is something that you could put on a web page. If I click that, it'll take just a second. I shouldn't have clicked it twice. And now we've got this app and I could put it up on a server or whatever. So if I had a website, I wanted to put it up on there, then I could do it like this. And anyway, I don't want to do that, but let's say I want to just make a Windows app. So create a standalone desktop application using the MATLAB compiler. I can do that and it'll specify the app name and everything. And this will actually create a app that somebody can install on their computer. So if you created an app you thought was cool that you wanted to share with friends, this would be the way to do it. You do want to be aware that this, if you're running like an educational version, uh, you can't just share this standalone file with anyone. Um, you're allowed to share it internally, uh, like with other students, but you can't just give it to anyone. There are some limitations on what you're allowed to do with this once you've got it, but this is how you create it. And there you are. You can also save export to .m file. You do want to be careful with the .m uh, because you do want some things like the my app to match your file name and stuff like that. But if I did this and save this and open the .m file and run it, it runs just like the MATLAB application .mlapp, but just with some limitations because I cannot go back and forth between my design view and code view anymore. I have obviously full control over this now. There's not anything grayed out. I'm just in the editor like normal. It just doesn't let me use the app designer anymore with the .m file. So be aware of that. And there's a ton to graphical user interfaces in MATLAB and in other languages. It's very complicated, but uh, basically, if I show the code here, and let's go over the structure of this. The way this app will work is got class def, so it defines a class. And let's actually just go to the M file. If I go up to the top, I'm defining a class called my app exported or whatever yours is called and just to see if when I change this it will run it will not and so of course you have to match these as I mentioned it'll work fine but uh, the way it works is we've got our class defined and then we have a less than that less than just indicates that this class that we defined is a subclass of matlab.apps.app base. So inside MATLAB, we've got apps and it's got the base app type. This 
app that I created is a subclass of this. So it means it inherits or kind of gets all the parameters, variables, and nodes from the app base. And then I've got my properties. These are all the app components defined. So there's my UI figure, pick, plot dropdown, and the corresponding UI control aspect. Then I've got the properties. So if I go back to this and add a property, my properties will be right here. If I had a function, my functions will be right here. Add another function, just puts another one right here. So it's got sort of the defining my app class. Then it's got the properties that are my app components. Then it's got my custom properties with whatever values I want to use throughout multiple places in the app. So say property equals one. If I wanted to use this property, if for example, I wanted to use it in this callback, you do app dot property. And let's say that's what I wanted to put into here. If I run this. Oh, I'm in the wrong callback. So app property. Uh, and it'll give me an error because I need to convert it to a string. So I could use my property that I defined in here just like that. Define my property, property equals one. I could change the value of it down here, but property equals one. So when I push this button, it'll convert it to a string because that's what uh, this value has to be. The type of this value is a string. So convert this numerical value to a string and that's what it'll display when I push my button. So that's how you can use a property. And then our functions, this is just like if you wanted to create your own function like normally and use it just as you would in your normal MATLAB code, right? If I wanted to use function, in my normal MATLAB code, I would just create a function over here in another file. Uh, with this, I can put it in the same file and I can access this with this. And I could add more inputs. And then I could just say results is in one plus in two or whatever. And let's say instead of the property, I wanted to use this function to do it. Let's press this right here and run this. See if this works. And it does. So very nice. And app isn't used in this case. You could fill it with a tilde. But that is just because because it's a method, we feed in app as the first input. So it's okay that one and two are this in one and in two, because this app is ignored. This is just because it's a method, the first input is defining this class, my app, so that I could refer to it in my function here. So that's properties and functions and how to use them in these callbacks. But for the overall structure again, we've got, we define our class, then we got properties that define the app components, then we got our custom properties, then we've got our custom functions, then we got the callbacks. So that's all of this down to here. And then we've got the components that are made in this. So what the app builder or the app designer is doing is it lets me put this in here and it will define app.uifigure.position is this position. So it just tells us what color it's going to make it, what uh, the X labels are for UI axes, all of that it does smartly and lets me edit it in here instead of in my code. So it makes it a little more accessible. So there's the methods just defining all of the components and you could see exactly how to work with, like let's say you wanted to change the text from down to to something else. You'd see when it 
initializes this component uh, in this part of the code, okay, they called up the text in that button with this. So now I could I could use that in my callback where I need to change that text or whatever it may be. And let's change this back to string because I forgot it would appear. And so all of these are the components being initialized. And this is if the entire thing is visible or not. Then I've got the creation of the app, the deleting of the app, the ending of it. And in the end, that gives us this complete structure of a MATLAB application. And the GUI design handles a lot of this, but it's still very valuable to understand where everything fits and how it works. And you could create this yourself with the .m file and it would work just fine. You don't have to use the app designer. And yeah, that's sort of all I'll go over for now. Hopefully this gets you to a starting point and inspires you to create your own app. And yeah, if, if you get into UIs, there's lots of, you can do Python UIs, C UIs are a bit complicated, but you can look into those too. And all sorts of other ones. Lots of UIs nowadays are made with browsers. So you can look into that if you're interested. But hopefully you learned a lot and thanks for watching.